Have you ever asked yourself, why do shadow work? Will it really make me stronger emotionally or more mature or more competent so I can rise to the top of the hierarchy or create my own and expand it into an empire? Will it really make me more confident in social scenarios or help me have better relationships like my psychoanalyst says? I want to dig into that. What does shadow work do for your psyche, for your life? For starters, let's define some Jungian jargon and get that out of the way. And if you could skip ahead if you already know all of this. Carl Jung separated the unconscious into four different Jungian archetypes. I'm just going to go over a few of them. One is the self. This is the true you. It's your consciousness and unconsciousness together and unified. Jung said, the self embraces ego consciousness, shadow, anima, and collective unconscious in interminable extension. As a totality, the self is a coincidentia, a positorium, a positorum. It is therefore bright and dark and yet neither. He also said, the self is the total timeless man who stands for the mutual integration of conscious and unconscious. So the self is every part of your psyche together. It's all the pieces, all the archetypes that you're trying to integrate and balance properly. It's what you're making whole. The anima is the feminine part of a man's psyche, often an image of an idealized woman that beckons you into your feminine side. And the animus is the masculine part of a woman's psyche, doing precisely the same thing, but for the masculine. The persona is the partial you. It's the polite, civilized mask you wear to convince the world you can play by the rules of your culture. It's not the real you, because it's only parts of you, like the very tip of the iceberg. But it's necessary to get along with people and work well together. And then finally, there's the shadow, what we're going to be talking about today. The shadow is the dark and emotional part of your psyche that you repress and do your best to forget exists. Jung defined the shadow archetype as the dark and emotional side of your personality or psyche. It can be immoral, but this isn't always the case. There's also a bunch of other important archetypes like the hero, the wise old man or the wise old woman, the trickster, etc. I'll leave those for another day. All right, let's get to the two primary reasons to do shadow work, starting with hell. So the first reason to do shadow work is because ignoring your shadow will make life a living hell for you. If you never gaze into the abyss that is your shadow, never successfully complete that shadow work, the most common consequences are basically moderate to severe versions of hell, including feelings of isolation, psychological separation from others, Actual isolation as you distance yourself from the outside world. Broken relationships, friendships, intimate partners, familial, business, colleagues, etc. Career and business deterioration. Anger, bitterness, jealousy, the type of thing that makes you lash out at people without even thinking about it. Apathy, a lack of passion and energy in your life. And the same frustrating lessons appearing in our lives over and over and over again. We all know the guy or girl who always ends up with the same sort of scumbag no matter how hard they try to avoid them, or the people with the best intentions who seem to just attract the worst drama or failures into their lives over and over again. This is caused by ignoring the unconscious mind, and specifically the shadow. Number two, and this is my favorite reason, you'll discover gold in the shadow something I call the superpowers of the shadow. So we've probably heard it about a million times now, but there's more to this than meets the eye. The reason we venture into the cave to fight the dragon or descend into the abyss to face the monsters there is because there's a hoard of gold there, and maybe even a beautiful virgin, right? So what exactly does that mean, gold in the shadow? Or as I like to say, superpowers, the superpowers in the shadow. Well. Let's start with this. And this is from Owning Your Own Shadow by Robert Johnson. It is also astonishing to find some very good characteristics turn up in the shadow. 
Some of the pure gold of our personality is relegated to the shadow because it can find no place in that great leveling process that is culture. And he also said, to draw the skeletons out of the closet is relatively easy, but to own the gold in the shadow is terrifying. You can use shadow work to tap into previously unknown resources like the healthy use of anger or similar emotions, aggression, uh, sexuality, and other previously repressed instincts, along with creativity of various forms, for example. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll get into all that soon. Um, Jung. Jung said, The shadow is not, however, only the dark underside of the personality. It also consists of instincts abilities and positive moral qualities that have long been buried or never been conscious. It even contains childish or primitive qualities which would, in a way, vitalize and embellish human existence, but convention forbids. He also said, if it has been be believed hitherto that the human shadow was the source of all evil, it can now be ascertained on closer investigation that the unconscious man, that is, his shadow, does not consist only of morally reprehensible tendencies, but also displays a number of good qualities, such as normal instincts, appropriate reactions, realistic insights, creative impulses, etc. So the gold, ultimately, is the potentiality in the shadow. And there's a lot of it as you'll soon see. It's different for every unique individual, of course, but there's a lot of commonality as well. So I'm about to dig into what these piles of gold in the unconscious mind are, what shadow work leads to. But a quick disclaimer, I'm gonna to try to keep this one shorter, so I'm not going to go into great detail on each one of these things, but if you'd like to see a video on any one of these topics, please let me know in the comments. And if you enjoy the content, by the way, let me know with a like, and I'll create more videos on shadow work and individuation. Now, here's the gold we've been talking about. The superpowers of the shadow. I'll try to cover the meteor ones first. One, connecting with and hearing the voice of your intuition. The guiding star and compass of your inner voice. If you haven't seen it yet, one of my favorite videos on this channel is called The Creative's Muse, Inner Voices of Inspiration. If I remember, I'll link to it below. Integrating your shadow ultimately leads to hearing that inner voice much more clearly for a wide variety of reasons that I won't delve into here, but will likely do a video on soon. Two, gaining courage, confidence, and self-esteem. You can show up with more courage when you show up as the whole you, the best version of yourself, or whatever you want to call it, which comes equipped with these superpowers of the shadow mentioned in this list. Shadow traits are often powerful parts of our personality, and even if they're actually weaknesses, shadow work brings them into the light so you can understand and even overcome them. Shadow work helps eliminate a lot of the self-doubt and self-loathing you may have as a result. And thanks to all of these shadow superpowers, a person with an integrated shadow is a more complete, competent, and powerful individual, which makes for a more courageous and confident person. And speaking of, number three is eradicating all forms of hell from your life. That is, everything that causes you to suffer. Right? Becoming a more complete, competent, and powerful person uh, involves getting rid of those things that make you suffer, of course. Number four is becoming invincible, or at least closer to it, in multiple areas in your life. The famous General Sun Tzu said, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. In other words, you're practically invincible. Knowing yourself through shadow work takes you halfway to success in just about any endeavor. Shadow work gives clarity on how your innermost thoughts and emotions drive your behaviors. With this information, you can predict foolish behavior before it happens and avoid it and put yourself in situations that give you the best chance of success. You'll also be able to harness the power of your emotions and libido overall to achieve your goals and your dreams. Number five, enhancing your love life and relationships in general. 
Shadow work helps you reduce how often you project your shadow onto others. People's personality traits, quirks, and actual weaknesses won't trigger you as much, and you'll gain a lot of patience. This increases your compassion and faith in others because you're not seeing the ugly darkness inside of you reflected in their actions, and you aren't as blind to their good traits. And as far as enhancing your love life goes, if you want to see a video on that, let me know in the comments below and we'll make it happen. Number six is learning to love yourself. This is a big one. This is a big one I think we tend to overlook for whatever reason. A big part of shadow work is shining a light on your shadow to the degree that you can and accepting what you find there, however ugly or terrifying it is. That doesn't mean taking the murderous hatred of your 8th grade math teacher and embodying that rage in some kind of spiteful revenge or something like that, but uh, many of the desires in the shadow are, are best kept there. But accepting that this part of yourself is there and that it's okay that it's there, as long as you're able to channel those emotions properly, is essential for your growth as a man or a woman. Number seven. Freeing yourself from your emotions by becoming aware of them and becoming able to control them better and even use them to your advantage. Number eight is identifying your unique needs and desires. Number nine, if you're religious, growing spiritually by hearing the voice of God through your soul or heart and or mind, as shadow work can help you listen to that still small voice that is deep within whatever you think that voice is, and more clearly. Number 10 is increasing your ability to make clearer decisions as you align and bring order to the many archetypes within, bringing them together and into unity, serving the self. Number 11 is improving overall physical and mental health. 12 is enhancing your creativity. Man, this is a big one that I'd love to do a video on. And number 13 is becoming wiser, more integrated overall, and mature. Last but not least, you will improve your life as a whole, number 14. So repressing your shadow, it obviously it leads to many, many problems. Uh, you might not even realize that those problems are stemming from the things that you've repressed in, until you're ready to face your shadow. Shadow work helps you take control and it starts at the roots, right? At the very depths of your psyche. Instead of uh, addressing specific issues like, uh, say, unhealthy relationships or stress or anxiety or depression, what shadow work does is it tackles the very root of the issue. And that truly does improve your life all around. And that's it for today. If you'd like me to cover any of these shadow superpowers in more detail or have another idea of something you'd like me to cover, leave a like and let me know in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one.